Hello everybody, this is Drinking Gamer back to conclude Group B with Round 5. So yes, we are concluding Group B here ladies and gentlemen. Still quite a bit left to play for here in Group E. At first we have a clash at the top between Heady the Eddie and Laos. A win, well whoever wins this matchup will top Group B. Yes, yes, they will top Group B regardless of what happens in any of the other matches. So it could be, it could be important to top, it's important to top the group because you get more favourable matchup. Well, on paper anyway, you know. <laughs> it's never never really a guarantee, but you know, topping, topping the group is a good thing, if you get what I mean. Good momentum going into the last 32. Can Laos end Heady's winning streak? Or will Heady make it 5 out of 5? Also coming up, we have... Dino Hunter going up against Pilk, an important match. Well, Dino Hunter's already out, basically playing for Pride, but an important match for Pilk. A win will thrust them, will thrust them into third place before Toka Nightmare takes on Jack McSeven. R. Oof, I don't know. Well, obviously Heady and Laus are through. Actually, not necessarily. If Heady wins, then Laus could be eliminated, could drop into four. But on 11 points, I think would be enough. So a losing bonus point would guarantee... Actually, actually no, it wouldn't, because Pilk could get a bonus point win. And then that would put him above Laos, because he beat Laos. And then Toka could win. So yeah, a little bit of pressure on Laos. But a win guarantees Laos will go through. So let's not dilly-dally. Let's get on with that matchup, which is, as I said, Laos taking on Heady. Great deal, then. In the red corner for Laos, we have an Angie Ceratops. Well, it was an angry Ceratops because it gave Louse a 3 0 win over Jack McSevenar last time out, so Heady better watch his sex, otherwise, he could be suffering the wrath of this beast. Although, in the blue corner, we do have a, tyr we do have a Tyrannosaurus, and well, this Tyrannosaurus is a shredding machine, and it's one of the big reasons why Heady has won 4 out of 4. I mean, look at that magma blast! Absolutely insane. Almost a, actually, yeah, I think it is on par with the crit. <laughs> Absolute insanity. Ooh, we start with a tie. Ties favour the Yankee Ceratops, though. Ooh, but it's Tyrannosaurus getting the first hit. Good start there from Heady, but the counter blitz has been triggered, which guarantees Louse the hit next round. Nice Volcano Boost action there, adding extra damage. Well, there's a hit from Heady, but the Counter Blitz is going to deny it. So instead, Lousp is going to get the hit, because he's allowed to attack even when he loses. Oh, risky crit there from the Yankee Ceratops. But it's paid off. A risk because if Tyrannosaurus went paper, then Anki Ceratops would be dead. And an electric charge as well. Life in the lead. And it looks like Laus is going to have a 1 0 lead. Is Heady in trouble? Oh, no, no. Tyrannosaurus survived. But the Anki Ceratops is stacked up in attack power now. Courtesy of Electric Charge, which is bad for Heady, because should this T-Rex die, Spinosaurus got to come in. Oh, the T-Rex does get a cheeky hit. Good hit there from Heady. Ooh, what have we got here this time? It's a Volcano Burst, another one. How handy can that be? No Counter Blitz either. Oh, but it's a tie. Exactly what Louse wants. Tyrannosaurus going down. Louse has a 1-0 lead, but it is a slender one. Now then, the key for Heady here is to kill the Ankyceratops with his Spino without taking too much damage, but it will be difficult because, as I said, that Ankyceratops has the tight advantage and is stacked up in attack power courtesy of Electric Charge. Dun, 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 dun. So Heady not out of the woods yet. Oh, it's a hit! Will this be enough? Oh, wow. <laughs> Not even close. In fact, I think Angie Ceratops could tank another one of those. Oh, it's a tie! Oh, it's not even enough! 
Well, the Spino avoided taking hits from Ankyceratops, but the Ankyceratops did land some damage with a Tizer. Now, the momentum has swung in Herdy's favour because this Alpha Acro of Laos has the tight disadvantage against the Spino. Dino Stuffer could be key here to stop Heady from ex racing into a big lead. Wow, back and forth match this. Just when Laos had the other hand, Heady's coming back. Oh, that's a tie. Ties will favour the Acro though. Another tie. Another tie. This is favouring Laos though. The ties are chipping away at the Spino's health. Oh, it's a crit. It, well, it might not be lethal. I don't think it'll be lethal, but the Spino is going to take a beat it. Boosh. Yeah, look at that. Ty will give Laos the 2 1 lead. Ooh, however, this Futaba cannon will do some damage. This Spino coming back strong. Boosh. Big damage coming at Rose Way. Look at that. Heady pulling it back. Oh, well, that guarantees that Laos will not. Well. The Heady will not get the hit because Laos has Dino stuff. Oh, it's a Firebomb! Laos, despite the tight disadvantage, having a 2-1 lead. But as I said, it's a slender one. So yeah, wouldn't be a surprise if Heady pulled this back. In fact, Heady's been behind in pretty much all his matches in this tournament, except for the first one. And maybe the second one? But yeah, against Togra and Dino in particular, he was, he was basically playing catch-up for the whole match and then snatched it with this Ankylosaurus. Can he do it again to make it five wins out of five? Oh, there's a tie. Ties will favour Laos, though. Well, the Dino Stuffer wasn't even used. And Heady has pulled it back. Right then. Now for Lausp's third dino, the Therizinosaurus. This, ooh, this is going right down to the wire. Can Heady see get this fifth win? Or can Lausp put an end to his winning streak? A fifth a win here would really give Heady some momentum going into the knockout rounds. Oh, the fairy gets the hit! Oh, I think that's the losing bonus point guaranteed now. That might actually take Laos through. Oh, is a hit from the Ankylosaurus. Is this where Heady snatches this match? Mole attack coming. The rock roller will be triggered and Laos does not have the protection of Dino Stuffer anymore. Oh, this might be it! Are you serious? They've freaking done it again! Heady has done it again! Snatching a match with a rock roller! Right, I'm gonna pause real quick to double check the Ankylo's health. Yeah, Laos will be guaranteed the losing bonus point, but Heady makes it 5 out of 5 to win Group B! Snatching the match yet again with a rock roller! Well, pro tip, if you want to defeat Heady in this tournament, have a have your third dino have dino stuffer to stop them getting the crit or crit block. And you won't get the rock roller off then. But you know, yeah. But anyway, enough about that. What a win for Heady though. Coming back. Yet again, coming back into it and was basically behind for the whole match. Ugh, you can't make this up. I will say though, will that come back to all them in the knockout rounds probably will if I'm honest but you know we'll just have to see won't we five wins out of five going into the knockout rounds well it's the knockout rounds is when it really matters you know anyone can win five out of five but can you win in the knockout rounds well again nothing has, has really changed Heady's guaranteed top spot 
winning Group B on 16 points with 5 out of 5. Laos in second place did get a losing bonus point, which, well, heaps the pressure on Pilk, because now Pilk will need a bonus point win to go level, to go above Laos into second. Of course, none of this could matter if Toka gets defeated. All Pilk would need then is a win against Dino Hunter. But we'll just have to see, won't we? A bonus point win will... Actually, yeah, bonus point win will pretty much do it for Pilk. Keep all the pressure on Toka Nightmare in the next matchup. However, Jack McStevenar still has amb ambitions of getting out this group, but needs a 3-0 win against Toka, as I said. Or, well, again, a bonus point win will take him to 8, but I don't think 8 is going to be enough, to be honest. But you never know, it might be. It might be. But anyway, on to our second matchup of this group, and that sees Dino Hunter going up against Pilk. I'll tell you one thing, I am going to miss the Naughty Toddlers in this tournament. But in the red corner, for Dino Hunter, for the last time in this tournament, it is Alpha Rajasaurus. Well, Dino Hunter plays for Pride here, winless in this tournament. I will say though, even though they are winless, they have been competitive in every match they've been in. It's not like the other guys have had a complete easy stroll to victory. Like, I'd say with the exception of maybe the first match, because Laos was quite dominant. But, you know, against Toka, Dino Hunter could have won. Probably should have won. Against Hedy, again, Dino Hunter should have won that match. And against Jack McSevenard, Dino Hunter was in the match. So, you know, if little moments in those matches when Dino Hunter's way, we could be looking, looking at a completely different table. A table where Dino Hunter could have got through. So, yeah. Hasn't quite happened for him this time, but, you know, it's not like they've been steamrolled in every match. They have been competitive and they've been in every match in this tournament. And, you know, they could win this match. Can they do it? But remember, Kilk <laughs> needs the bonus point win to go level, well, to go above Laos in the table. But uh, any sort of win will do it for Pelt. Get him in that top three and keep loads of pressure on Toka Nightmare. Ooh, Lexoversaurus getting a hit there. Pilt fighting back. Attack boost coming in here. Pilk needs to kill this Ragasaurus quick though, because I believe this second dino is a wind dinosaur. Ooh, oh, Dino Staffer. <laughs> Like, in fairness to Dino Hunter, like, it's, it's, it's just, uh, his team's not bad, it's a good team, it's just, as I said, little moments in the matches I mentioned just did not go his way. Like, if, if they had gone his way, he would have won those matches. And let's not forget, he was leading throughout most of those matches, but just couldn't finish the job. And I think that is why he is winless in this tournament. Not because his team is bad. It's just because those he just couldn't get the hits on when it really mattered to finish the to finish the job. But anyway, getting a hit so far though, Dino Enter. As for Pilk's second Dino, it's you strep the spondylus. Now big pressure on Pilk here. If Pilk fails to get a bonus point win, Laos will be safely through. Ooh, here comes a hit, but yeah, look how much damage this is going to do now. Minuscule damage. Dino Hunter on top. But can they stay on top? Now, that's been the problem here. Is when Dino Hunter has been on top in matches, he's not been able to capitalise. And has always seemed to lay his opponents back in the match. Oh, he's capitalising so far. Getting a hit there on the... You strip the Spondylus. Has the lead Dino Hunter. Has the type advantage. Although, I will say, a Dino swing from the Ustrep the Spondylist should finish off the Raj. Dino Illusion being triggered there. That'll definitely help Pilt get back in this match. Oh, a big Dino Illusion there. Stopping the Firebomb.
Well, look at this from Dino Hunter. Loads of hits. But again, this happened against Toka, and we all know how that ended. So, you know. Well, it's a 2 0 lead for Dino Hunter. Definitely finishing their tournament on a high. Well, at, at the minute. But as I said, based on how his other matches have gone, you know. Wouldn't bet against Pilk coming back here to win 3 2. And this Amplosaurus does have the type advantage. So, you know, don't count Pilk out yet. Pilk, though, in trouble. And because they will not get a bonus point win, Louse is now safely through to the last 32. So Dino went to doing Louse the favour there by defeating you strip the Spondylus. Although, Aqua Whip is going to finish off the Raj. And Dino Nerd, no, Dino Hunter will not have a 3 0 win. But, this Sorolophus coming in next will probably finish the job here and give Dino Hunter that crucial win that they've been searching for. Yes, this Sorolophus, well, we've seen what it can do. We've seen glimpses of what it can do. We've seen glimpses of it sucking. Dun, 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 dun. Can Dino Hunter finish the job here or is history going to repeat itself? Oh, it's history repeating itself. Pilk all of a sudden getting some hits. Oh, that's a tie. Two platoon crush will get triggered. Ooh, but not activating though. The tie attacks chipping away at the Sorolophus. But this Sorolophus is revival type. Oh, but it's not going to revive. It's an Aqua Whip. I think Pilk. Coming back into it now, and is definitely have and definitely has the momentum. Wow! <laughs> I can't believe it. This is happening again. It's going to happen again for Dino Wonder, isn't it? They build a two-nil lead and they throw it away. Well, let's see. Let's see if Dino Wonder can close this out this time with this Isosaurus. Oh, it's a tie. Really needs to stifle the momentum of the Amplosaurus, though. Achoo! Look at this. Pilk has the lead. Well, now he has the lead. And he has at least a losing bonus point. But again, Pilk needs to win or he'll be eliminated. Boosh! Look at this from Pilk, though. Coming back strong. Well, um, um, I have nothing to say. Well, um, Dino and uh, just could not see the job through. And yet again, Pilt come, an opponent comes from behind to beat Dino Hunter. And that is a crucial, crucial win for Pilk that for the moment will put him third, pl put him in third place. As for Dino Hunter, well, same old problem, really. You build the lead, and then it gets thrown away. And, it, you know, it's a disappointing end for Dino Hunter in this tournament. But as I said, they were competitive in every match, and they had a chance to win matches and just did not take them. And when you don't take your chances, the odds are you're probably going to get sucker punched. And that, well, that's what happened there. Couldn't finish the Amplosaurus off and got punished for it. Right, again, I'll have, to, I'll have a look at the table as it stands and then move on to our final match. Well, <laughs> crucial win there for Pilk. It just sneaks him into the top three there on 11 points. Heaps all the pressure on Toka Nightmare now. Although, I think even if Toka... Well, I think if Toka can get at least a losing bonus point or a draw, I think 10 points... Given how many people are on seven points at the minute in fourth place, might actually be enough. But yeah, ideally, Toka wants a win. And, well, if Toka does win, then I think Pilk will go through as one of the best fourth place guys, because 11 points should surely be enough. So yeah. 
regardless of this re of the next result, I'm pretty confident that these two are going to go through. So yeah, pilt there. But ideally, you want to be in third place to make it official. And you don't really want to wait till round five for group I concludes into, before you find out whether you made it or not. But yeah, all the pressure on Jack McSevenar now. They need the 3-0 win against Toka, otherwise it's elimination. And honestly, given that their first dino I think is a Serato and Toka has Raj in first, I don't think they're going to get a 3-0 win. But you never know. We'll just have to do the match and get it started now. Break the O then in the red corner for Jack McSevenar. It is a Super Seratosaurus. Well, <laughs> it's 3 0 or bust for Jack now. Anything other than a 3 0 win will knock him out of the tournament. And honestly, given that Toka's first dino is a fire dinosaur, I don't see them getting a 3 0 win. They might get the lead, they might extend it, but eventually I think Toka will kill the Serato. Right, as for Toka in the blue corner, as I said, we've got a Rajasaurus in Alpha Rajasaurus. A win will do it for Toka Nightmare now. That's all they need to get through. In fact, I think a, loot, a draw or a losing bonus point will probably be enough, given how many points they got. But, you know, they need... Ideally, they want to make it official. So a win will do it for Toka. Oh, that's a tie. Another tie. Was not the worst possible start for Jack McSeven. Oh, crit. Look at that. And the poison as well. And the type. Yeah, that's yeah, that's gonna be it. It was it was a slim chance, but at least it was a chance. And yeah, there it is. Oh but and of course, Toka gets heat eruption off anyway, so the Ceratosaurus is gonna die anyway. So yeah, that's it. That will confirm Jack McSevenar's departure from this tournament. That also guarantees... Well, that will also pretty much guarantee that Hilk will be going through to the last 32. Because, let's be honest, 11 points in 4th place is going to be enough. Put it that way. Is going to be enough. Right, Dio then. As for Jack McSevenar's second, I know it's Ampelosaurus. Playing for pride now. Can they finish the tournament? On a high. Oh, there's a tie. Alpha Rajasaurus having the upper hand here, fighting in the Alpha Arena, and it's showing. Actually, I don't think that's... I don't think there, it has an, uh, the upper hand because it's in the Alpha Arena. I'm just making that. Aqua Vortex coming in, though. Oh, wow. This, um, this Rajasaurus is sweeping. It was just like Dino Hunters did. Come on. Come on, Ampelosaurus. Get a hit. Oh, it's a tie. At least there's no heat eruption. Because that would have killed the Ampelosaurus. Another tie. Oh, Ampelosaurus getting the hit. Finally, Jack and Seven are getting a hit. I think that's their first one. The Rajasaurus going down. Jack McSeven are showing some defiance in their last match of the tournament. However, as for Toka's second dino, it is Super Lillian Sternus. Will we see the Awaken mode? We'll just have to see, won't we? I, we might see it, you know, if the Ampelosaurus starts piling up hits, then probably not, because free hits will kill this thing. Oh wow, it's raining quite heavily. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm just looking out my window, it's like raining, and I can see like the rain sweeping in. Oh, and the wind's picked up as well. <laughs> Good thing I shut my window already. But anyway, Ampelosaurus getting some hits. Can Jack McSevenar... Well, Defense Boost Buzz does nothing at this point. Can Jack McSevenar come back into this? Oh! 
A big war cry from Gabro, but again, they, where was this with a Ceratosaurus? Boosh! Oh, wow! Well, um, Token Nightmare's losing all of a sudden. However, here's the ace in the hole. It's Bronthakins. Probably the sole reason why Token Nightmare is in this position they're in. Well, all of a sudden, from comfortable to concerned, can Jack McSevenar get this done? I mean, again, it's not going to change anything because four points ain't enough. They needed five. Oh, oh, they, well, there goes Ampelosaurus. Bronthikin's getting the hit. Right then, as for Jack's third dino, it is a Ferrazinosaurus, a Super Fairy, and the Awaker mode is actually right away. I think. Yeah, it's right away. It's gonna be interesting, isn't it? At least we'll get to see it, unlike the other two. Supers? Well, uh, why, why? Okay, now, now that we know that Jack McSevenar's out of the tournament, we should talk about what went what, wrong. Um, Again, it's kind of like a Dino Hunter situation. It just... I, I, but I, I feel like Dino Hunter was more competitive in their matches. Like, having the Awaken mode right away for the Fairy in particular and hasn't really helped. And let's not forget, three of his matchups with Ceratosaurus were against a Fire Dinosaur. So, against Dino Hunter, against well, Toka, against Heady. And then, obviously, the 3-0 against Laos was devastating. Like, that was probably the nail in the coffin. Oh, bless him, he didn't even get the hit. <laughs> and, well, there's a losing bonus point guaranteed for Tucker Nightmare, and that will pretty much guarantee their place now. But, at this point, they want to win this match. And, yeah, there it is. Job done for Toka Nightmare. They will be going through to the last 32 in third place. And Pilt will have to wait anxiously to see if they have enough points to get through as one of the best fourth place teams. As for Jack McSevenar, going out in a bit of a whimper to be honest. You know, I, I, again, I think that the 3-0 against Laos was the damaging, was the damaging factor there. But, you know, at least they got a win in this tournament. So there is that. Right, we'll have a look at the, tab the table now for the last time for Group B. Ooh, it's getting tight now in our fourth place spot. As Pilk will almost definitely go through now with 11 points. Despite finishing in fourth. Because a lot, a lot of the guys are on seven points. Well, Cerno's on seven, so Pilk is above them at the minute. Actually, I think... Actually, yeah, yeah. I'm just, just looking at the uh, tables for the other groups. And yeah, I am pretty... I'm pretty convinced that Pilk is def... Yeah, Pilk is definitely through. They have more points than Cerno, in, who's in fourth place and have already played. And I'm looking at the other groups. A Thunderstorm in fourth place in Group D is on four points. So they, so they cannot catch Pilk. So Pilk's already ahead of two of them. And we have Moores on six points and Jonas Chu was on six points. And they would need 3-0 wins to get through. But again, you know, 3-0 wins will take them out of the top, out of fourth place. And Astarion, Zalos, Arctic, yeah, yeah. Pilk is, I think Pilk is through. I think Pilk is one of the, one of the four place teams that will be going through 11 points will do it but it is token nightmare guaranteeing their place in the last 32 in third place and then obviously we have heady winning the group five wins out of five and then laos clinging on to second place only above token nightmare by virtue of the fact that laos beat token Nightmare. token nightmare will be going up against whoever finishes second in group g which well it could be anybody to be honest look how tight given how group G is, but as it stands, it will be against Nopi, but that will definitely change. Don't worry, that will probably change. And then we, it will be, then Heady will be going up against 
whoever finishes third in Group H, which at the minute is Blood Moon, who is sitting in third place. And well, it won't be Lauren. Be well, it could be Lauren actually. No, it won't be. Uh, mm, eh. No, it won't be. It won't be. Because I think the lowest she can finish is actually yeah, it could be Lauren's actually. But well, anyway, it doesn't really matter until we actually conclude Group H. But at the minute, it will be Blood Moon going up against Hedy. M extra motivation to not finish third in Group H because you got to go up against Hedy. And then as for Laos, they shall be taken on. Just gotta find B two real quick. Ooh, tough game for Laos though. They will take on whoever wins Group C. Ooh, that could be interesting, which at the minute, Ultima Dino King leads the pack. Ooh, we could see a rematch of the last of the final in the last 32 round. What a match that could be. Of course, you know, all, everything can change in Group C. So Laos, but, well, they're not taking on seven shots for a start because seven shots can't win the group. So it'll, he'll either be going up against Random Shy Ghost, Molochoridus, or Ultima Dino King. Ooh. Wow, finishing second, a killer for Laos today, actually. <laughs> I think Toka definitely got the good end. But yeah, that is Group B, ladies and gentlemen. Concluded, done, and wrapped up. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Stay tuned for next time, where we will conclude Group C. And we will find out who's Laos, who Laos's opponent will be in the last 32. And until then, this is Stranger Gamer, signing out.